my chair? My this chair. is fine. Severin, thank you for, for being here and joining us today. Hey, Jason. Uh, so he referenced um, AOL chatbots, which like brought to mind Smarter Child, which I think was the first chatbot I was ever introduced to, something like 20 years ago. It's the 20th anniversary of AOL Instant Messenger, in case you don't feel old enough. We've heard about chatbots throughout the year. We've seen things like uh, there was Clippy, which was kind of its own <laughs> form of chatbot. There was uh, last year Microsoft had also Tay, which I think we all remember not fondly, I would guess, but you guys are working in chatbots in, a, in an interesting way. Uh, talk to us a little bit about exactly what, what that is. What is a Duolingo chatbot? Yeah, so uh, how many here in the audience know uh, of Duolingo? All right, that's pretty much everyone. Um, it's pretty good, it's pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty good. Um, and how many have tried the Duolingo chatbot? All right, fewer. OK, so for those of you who have not seen the Duolingo chatbot, it's really like a way to learn conversation through conversation. So when you open Duolingo, you can go and uh, start a conversation with a chatbot, right? And the way you can think of it is it's like a, like a scenario. So if, for example, you're at the airport or you're in a restaurant and you talk to an AI who asks you questions like, what do you want to eat? Um, you know, show me your papers. Where are you traveling from? That's, that's kind of the, the main idea. Um, should I give uh, an example? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, when we were first, like, talking about doing this, I, I started using them, and it, and it immediately struck me in the sense that, like, most of the chatbots that I had encountered, primarily, especially since last year when Facebook announced that, oh, we're getting really into chatbots here, you can order flowers, things like that, they were all corporate. These were actually kind of, like, people. It, it felt more personal. Right. So one of my favorite examples of a uh, dueling a chatbot is this, uh, this script called Pizza Time. So in Pizza Time, there's, uh, there's a chef, and his name is Roberto. And uh, you have to help Chef Roberto make a pizza. So he asks you questions like, well, how are you? Uh, do you like cooking? Um, and then you, know, you go into the actual pizza making, and it's like, hey, do you want to add a tomato to your pizza? And uh, you know, you, depending on how you respond, you will actually end up with you know, a different pizza. And this is like, if you think about it, um, there's many ways you can teach a language. But probably like the most native way to teach a language is through language itself. And that's, that's the idea of the Duolingo chatbots. So yeah, that's interesting. I was about to say, like, when you asked you know, who here knows Duolingo, you, you've got a very good response. Uh, you guys already had seen you know, a good amount of success and, and have a tremendous amount of reach with you know, uh, basically you know, an education platform. Uh, talk to me about why. You, you know, when did you guys say to yourselves, like, hey, we've got this great platform. Let's start rolling out something entirely new onto it. So it's, it's a combination of things. Uh, one, one thing is like, you know, we looked at how people use Duolingo and, uh, you know, what, what Duolingo is good at and what Duolingo is not so good at. Um, and, you know, we realized, you know, conversation is not yet uh, the strength of the Duolingo um, product. So we wanted to really, you know, really fix that, right? And this was about the same time when uh, there was this huge hype around chatbots, right? Uh, this was maybe 2016. People uh, were talking about. Yeah, everyone was like, "Oh my God, like this that. is gonna, you know, we're not gonna use graphical user interfaces anymore. It's all gonna be voice, and it's all gonna be like chatbots." And we thought, "Hmm, that's interesting." Um, and you know, somehow like it leveled off. It kind of disappeared. Um, and uh, you know, like uh, you know, the graphical user interfaces are still there. Um, but we think the Duolingo use case is actually very different from like what people thought about. Um, you know, what to use chatbot, chatbots for. And we thought it makes perfect sense. So we said, okay, let's, let's uh, you know, combine the two. There's this chatbot technology, and you know, the world is maybe moving to chatbots. And we have this problem with conversation, uh, tied them together, and that, that was uh, the initial idea. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Although I, I would say to myself, all right, it's probably pretty easy to write some sort of script where it's, here's how I order flowers. There's a very limited number of things I can probably ask it, because it's about flowers. You guys are asking, it, asking your chatbots to basically have conversations that are, have an almost limitless uh, you know, scope. Uh, that's a big challenge. Like, talk to me about how far along you guys are in being able to have you know, a pretty dynamic conversation with these things. So we're still at the beginning. Uh, thanks for you know, uh, <laughs> remark. We're still at the beginning, and you know, that, that's really just the beginning. Um, if you think about like, how, how you build a chatbot, you know, if, if, you know, the way it currently works is like through the scripts, and it's not super sophisticated. Now, our scripts are really nice, and you know, they're, they're like you know, good content. Um, 
and you know we put a lot of effort into that, and we put a lot of effort into actually also um, you know accepting a lot of answers, right? There's, you know there's many many paths through the through the script, um, and uh, the way uh, what we're currently working on is really like improving that, like making it much more open ended, like actually like uh, you know like you can say whatever you want, right? I mean. For example, in the script with the uh, pizza time, if you say, you know, if you ask you, do you want to add uh, a tomato, and you answer, no, I want to add a spaceship, you know, <laughs> that, you know that doesn't work. Okay. Uh, that doesn't work yet, and you know the, that 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 requires like a much deeper uh, understanding of language, and that's 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 what we're working on. But it, it's you know um, a long way. Sure. So let's get to the guts of this thing a little bit then. I mean, if I'm using this thing uh, today, is it going to be the same tomorrow? Or is it starting to recognize what I'm saying, how I go about it? How, how dynamic are these things in terms of learning and, and, and building upon uh, the, the use of, of them? So, no, it's not going to be the same. And the way, the way we do this is like, um, you know, we, we see people use these chatbots, right? So we, we, we collect the data and then we, you know, use machine learning to actually figure out like what works and what doesn't work. Uh, which scripts are better, which ones are worse. And through that uh, process, we can actually increase uh, the quality of the scripts, and the chatbots get smarter uh, in some way. And uh, you know, this is the same way as, as Siri got smarter. I don't know if you remember G Siri at the beginning versus today. You know, it got much, much better. And you can only do this um, by actually collecting the data. And Duolingo has you know, this massive, massive user base, and we have you know, tons of people using these chatbots every day. So they get better every day. What, what was some of the surprising things when you guys started collecting this data and, and looking at it and using it to, to build up the system? Were there any assumptions that you guys had that you had to go back and rethink? Yeah, so if you think about it, um, when we started, we thought, uh, you know, this is ju just going to be like a, a chat button, you're going to talk to it. But if you think about it, you type in a language that you don't know. That's actually really difficult. You know, you first have to come up, like, well, what do you want to say? And then you have to actually type it and, you know, you know, that, that's, that's difficult. So <laughs> at the beginning, people just got stuck. Like, they, they got stuck. I don't know what to say now. Uh. Um, what should I say? So we had to um, work around that. We had to build features that actually help people get unstuck. Like, you know, and the, the way this works in Duolingo is that there's a this feature which you call Help Me Reply. And you click on it, and it tells you, hey, you know, this is one possible way you can, you know, reply to this request. Excellent. So, I mean, certainly one of the things that I enjoyed uh, from using Duolingo in the past is that, you know, it kind of builds on itself. It, it kind of helps you, you know, uh, increase your, your levels every day. Are the chatbots able to do that? Are the chatbots able to get more and more advanced and, like, you know, progress with you? Yes. So the chatbots, so, by the way, they're not there at the very beginning. So if you just open Duolingo and start today, you won't see them. And they're, they're, only on, they're only on iOS right now? They're also only on iOS right now. But, like, once you reach a certain level, uh, you unlock the chatbots. And uh, you know, as you progress further, you unlock more and more chatbot scripts, which become more and more advanced. Um, and so this is like you know, playing into the leveling concept uh, of Duolingo. Excellent. So I mean, let's talk a little more broadly too about about chatbots in general. Um, I mean, do you use many chatbots yourself outside of uh, what you're working on at Duolingo? So it depends on. Uh, you know, how you define what a chatbot is, right? I, I use Siri. I, I think it's actually quite useful. Uh, you know, there's like these five, um, you know, types of requests I have for Siri. It's like, you know, set a reminder, um, you know, set a timer, and, you know, these kind of requests. I think it works really well, actually, for these. Uh, it doesn't work well for, you know, open-ended questions, right? Um, so that's, that's one I use. Um, Inside the office, I'm a, I'm a software engineer. We use like these uh, chatbots that you know manage servers to run deployments, and you know these are like Slack inside Slack, and um, those work well as as well. And and how much of, of that kind of uh, scene informs what you guys are doing? Because it certainly seems like you know I think my roommate actually built a chatbot on Facebook recently, which was a pretty bizarre thing to watch. Obviously, it was very simple, but it, it does seem like there, there's a reasonable amount of appetite now. Um, you mean is that helping fuel this? Are you seeing good retention from people who use the chatbots and want to keep coming back to them? Yes. So, you know, at Duolingo, we care about um, uh, growth and, and learning. Uh, you know, if, if people don't learn, this, this doesn't work. So we measure both. And we, like, we're extremely data-driven for, you know, like in our, in our space, we're probably the most data-driven, um, you know, company, um, if I may say so. Um, so we measure everything. Like, we measure engagement, the retention. Uh, learning, and, and, and we know that for chatbot, it, it actually is very positive, very promising. That's interesting. 
And, and so, where are we headed with chatbots? I mean, certainly, you know, kind of as a relative lay person myself, just kind of seeing these things come out, there's a lot of hype, but then you use them and they're not that great or they're very limited. Um, I, I mean, how long are we, do you think we're going to be waiting to see those really dynamic chatbots, the ones we might see in movies? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> you know, a friend of mine, he, he always says, uh, frustration is a matter of expectation. <laughs> so, you know, if, you, if your expectation is really high, you know, like this is going to be like a, like a real human, um, then, you know, you're going to be frustrated for a while. I think it's possible. I think, it, I think eventually we'll get there. Um, and I think you don't need general AI to build a chatbot that is really, really good at teaching you a language. Mm. So I think we will get there. Um, you know, I don't know. It's, it's going to take, you know, time. Sure. Uh, and education in particular is definitely, you know, a, a big area for this. Duolingo is focused on um, language, but uh, you know, what is the advantage of using chatbots primarily for education? Uh, you know, it seems like. You know, over the years, you know, traditional schooling is not necessarily uh, done one-on-one. -on -one. Um, you know, obviously most, you know, massive online courses, things like that, those aren't one-on-one -on -one really either. Right, right, right. So that, that's a good point. Um, there's actually a famous result in educational research, uh, which is called the Bloom's Paradox, which says that one-on-one -on -one tutoring is basically the best you can do. It's, it's, it's like, you know, an order of magnitude better than uh, a classroom. So one-on-one -on -one tutoring is like, you know, if you have the money, that's the best you can do. Um, and that's, you know, how, uh, you know, that, that's kind of like where we want to get with Duolingo. Now, with Duolingo, in addition to, like, you know, providing and developing the best education in the world, we also want to make it universally accessible. So it's not just, you know, like this one-on-one -on -one tutor and you have to, like, you know, uh, be rich, or, you know, to, to afford it. We want to actually make it, you know, uh, accessible to everyone. Sure. I wanted to go back to something you said earlier that I thought was really interesting, which is like, what do you consider a chatbot? So, I mean, l let's do like a, a quick round of yes, no. Uh, Alexa, is Alexa a chatbot? Um, yes. Okay. Um, if I talk to my car and my car can do whatever I tell it to do, is that a chatbot? Uh, you know, maybe. Okay. I think the question is like, you know, is it, is it multi-turn or is it like request response, right? Um, you know, it, it usually, I mean, with Alexa and the car, you initiate it and there's one response and that's it. Unless they didn't understand, in which case you <laughs> say the same thing again and feel a bit stupid. Um, but it's not like uh, the, 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 the AI asking you, hey, uh, Jason, how's it going? Sure, it's like a straight line from what you ask to what you want as opposed to being something that can branch off. Right. Um, and, and so I guess breaking off of that, though, do those things kind of help push us toward, more toward getting comfortable with chatbots? Because one of the things that's interesting to me, we were, we were walking here with one of the stage managers, and I asked her, have you ever used a chatbot? And she said, no. And I said, why not? She didn't seem to really have a reason other than the fact that she just hadn't encountered them. Um, I mean, is this a technology that you think a year from now she might have a different answer for? I hope she tries to do Lingo chatbots. <laughs> <laughs> Fair <laughs> uh, but I guess I'm, what I'm, I'm saying is like, you know, certainly last year with Facebook and, and rolling out uh, chatbots so aggressively on Messenger, it, was, it seemed to signal that this is where we see technology going. This is where we see society going. A year later, um, you know, a person we ask, granted, you know, it's the single person. Uh, actually, how about out here, on a weekly basis, how many of you use chatbots in some way, shape, or form? All right, so there's a few people. Uh, I mean, but it would seem like last year where Facebook thought things were going, it was going to be a lot more than that. Right. I mean, do you think that that's a structural thing that we're going to see slowly changing in the next few years, or was Facebook maybe just a year ahead of time? I think it's going to change. I think it's going to be uh, like, you know, if you ask the same question um, five years from now, I think there will be like more than 50% raising their hands. Yeah. I mean, I hope so, certainly. Um, do you have a, a Google Home or an Alexa at your place? Yes, I have a Alexa and... Um, and you know, I use Siri a lot. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Siri a lot. Purpose, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I was curious to, to, to know, like, when you're building these things, do you try not to make them too human? Where does the uncanny valley come in with, with chatbots? Yeah, so that's a good question. Um, <laughs> so my co-founder, uh, you know, he, he, he once uh, told me, look, um, do you know the movie Her? Oh, uh, sure. So, so for those of you who don't know Her, it, it's this movie where, um, you know, the, 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 main, the, the main actor falls in love with an AI. And uh, my co-founder said, I want to make her. I want to make her. 
that's that's the goal. Um, and uh, you know, the question is like, is the, well, is is this good? Um, and uh, it would be kind of weird, right? Sure. Well, it certainly <laughs> seems. I, I mean, it almost seems like a goal too that is like so far ahead of time that right. like you know, you're not going to probably have too much risk of of getting there. Um, but certainly, like you know, I think one of the things that was funny about seeing some of the the uh, emergence of chatbots is that they were primarily women. Now your your chatbots are are pretty diverse, um, but but do you think that that reflects any sort of like who's building these things or kind of what we're thinking of them? And do you expect that you know as as these things progress, we're going to see them get maybe even less human than they already are? Like, do they need human names? Um, I would say they're probably going to be more human. I think that that's still like I think the goal of of many of these uh, assistants to be as human as possible. Um, I imagine the reason why most of them are women is because they A-B tested the, the voice and found that the women voice had <laughs> sure. better engagement. Yeah, and it certainly we, seems We like, did the same, by the way. Yeah, it certainly <laughs> seems that like, well, I mean, at the beginning of her, it, I think it asked him, would you, would you prefer to be a male or a female assistant? So it certainly seems like there's a reasonable amount of customization that can come along with these things. Um, I guess the last thing I would ask is, certainly you're building these things on, on data that you've collected. Is it entirely Duolingo data that you're using to build this thing? Yep. It's entirely uh, built within Duolingo with uh, our own technology, our own data uh, inside the Duolingo app. So. And, and do, you, do you expect in the future we're going to see any open sourcing of this? Uh, you know, will kind of chat technology become something that you know, isn't you know, any more kind of a privatized thing, whether it's Siri, uh, whether it's Duolingo chatbots, and more towards something that's just like a script that you can build upon? Yeah, I think there's probably going to be, um, you know, I think there's going to be open source technologies. I think that will, will happen as the, the technologies mature. Um, and I think you will also see, like, more and more APIs and, and richer APIs to, like, Alexa and, you know, um, Siri and all that and uh, more languages. Yeah. Uh, and support are, for more languages. And are you guys, see, I mean, are we seeing, you know, young, young engineers starting to, like, embrace this as kind of, like, the direction of their career path? Or is this still something that's, like, relatively specialized? I don't see that yet. So. Okay. It might take a little while. All right. Well, maybe like exactly like you know one year ago. It's like <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah. I'm well, going to be Mark like Zuckerberg yeah. said yeah, yeah. going to listen. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Well, that's about it, all the time we have. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> We're going to definitely uh, give those Duolingo chatbots a run. All right.